بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس نیشنل اینڈ انٹرنیشنل افیئرس ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ود یو پاکستان ریلیشنز ود انڈیا ان دس ٹاپک آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس مینی تھنگ بٹ لیٹ اسٹارٹ اٹ فرام کشمیر کانفلکٹ ایز ایز یو آن نو دیٹ دا کشمیر کانفلکٹ از اے ٹیریٹوریل کانفلکٹ اور دا کشمیر ریجن between India and Pakistan, while China playing a third party role here in this region. The conflict started after the uh, partitions of India in 1947. As both, uh, I mean Pakistan and India, they claimed that the uh, entirety of the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir with Pakistan uh, recognizing Chinese severity or the Korokorum uh, Trek and also the uh, Siachin since uh, 1963. It is a dispute over the region that escalated into uh, three wars between Pakistan and India and, se- uh, and several uh, other armed uh, skirmishes. India controls uh, approximately uh, 55% of the land Uh, in this region that includes uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir Valley, uh, most of uh, Ladakh, the Siachin Glacier and uh, 70% of its population. You should know that uh, Pakistan controls approximately uh, 30% of the land area that includes Azad Kashmir, Gilgal Baltistan while China controls the remaining 15% of the land area. that includes the Siachian region, uh, the mostly uninhabited uh, Kurokoram Trek. After the partitions of India, uh, uh, Pakistani tribal Mujahideen invaded uh, Kashmir landing the Hindu ruler of Jammu and Kashmir to join India and starting the Indo-Pakistan War of uh, 1947. which this war ended with a United Nations meditation ceasefire along a line that eventually named the Line of Control, the LOC. After further fighting in the Indo-Pakistan War of 1965, the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, the Shimla Agreement formally established the line of control between the um, between the two nations control uh, territories in 1999 uh, the armed conflict between india and pakistan broke out again in the kargal war or the kargal district kargal uh, is a district in the kashmir since 1989 kashmiri protest movements Uh, uh, these movements were created to voice Kashmiri's disputes and with the Indian government in the Indian-controlled Kashmir Valley. Uh, there was an unarmed conflict with the Indian government based on the demand for self-determination. In 2010, Kashmir unrest began. after an alleged fake encounter between local youth and security forces. Thousands of youths, I mean Kashmiris, spelled security forces with rocks, burnt government offices, and the youth also attacked railway stations and uh, official vehicles and steadily intensifying violence. The Indian government blamed lashkar e taiba a Pakistani-based militant group for stoking the 2010 protests. In 2016, Kashmir unrest erupted after killing of uh, Hezbul Mujahideen militant, his name is the Burhan Wani, by Indian security forces. Further unrest in the region erupted after the 2009 Palwama attack. According to different scholars, Indian forces have uh, committed many human rights abuses and acts after 
uh, terror against Kashmiri civilian population, including extrajudicial killing, uh, rape, torture, and uh, uh, enforced disappearance. According to Amnesty International, uh, no member of the Indian military developed. Uh, they, the Indian military deployed in Jammu and Kashmir uh, has been tried for human rights violation in a civilian court. Currently, as you all know, that there is no internet in the region, no freedom of speech for last one year. Uh, they all are like uh, in a cage. Come to the next point, the scenario for war between the, between the two countries. In my opinion, neither Pakistan nor India is likely to uh, initiate a nuclear conflict without substantial provocation. India has declared a policy of no first use of nuclear weapons, except in response to an attack with the uh, biological or chemical weapons. Pakistan has also declared that uh, it would only use nuclear weapons if it couldn't stop an invasion by co conventional means or if it were attacked by nuclear weapons. India has conventional military superiority. India is also uh, geographically much lo uh, longer than Pakistan. One possible route to nuclear war involves a conventional conflict between India and Pakistan. If Pakistan perceived that uh, India were about to successfully invade them, that would put pressure on Pakistan to launch its nuclear weapons before they were overrun by the superior conventional Indian forces. Another possibility for starting a nuclear conflict is that India or Pakistan could lose control of its command and control structures due to an attack on them by, by the other side or possibly uh, an attack by terrorists from within India or Pakistan or from another country. In such a scenario, it is not clear who might be in control of the nuclear forces and what steps they might take. A third possibility, in my opinion, for starting a nuclear conflict is that uh, India or Pakistan might mistake an attack by conventional forces or even military exercises for an attack by nuclear forces. Next is the cultural diplomacy between two countries, the cultural diplomacy between Pakistan and India. As you all know that uh, in a world where power uh, is no longer determined solely by military might, cultural diplomacy leverages a country's identity, values, and its traditions to strengthen the relationships, uh, enhance social-cultural cooperation, uh, to promote national interest, and beyond. However, despite being uh, intrinsically linked through a common history and culture, India and Pakistan tensions are uh, at all time high. I will remind you that in February 2019, the two sides exchanged airstrikes and after the match, uh, an attack on an Indian army convoy and Indian administrator Kashmir which was claimed by Pakistan-based terror groups uh, Jaisi Muhammad. Indians uh, in August 2019, they moved to withdraw Article 370 from Jammu and Kashmir, which uh, struck down the disputed uh, territory's semi-autonomous status uh, has further disrupted the peace between the two countries. Neither India nor Pakistan, uh, they can afford a nuclear war. Both sides stand to benefits in turn from recognizing cultural uh, uh, synergies and enhancing people-to-people -people connections, people-to-people -people ties and corporations. The bleak narratives of mistrust, hostility, 
and political altercations between the two countries. It becomes easy to forget the, the rich history of shared culture and experiences that bends them together and can also help build trust and understanding between Pakistan and India. Our leaderships uh, have moved the needle on this despite recent tensions. As you all know the uh, Kartarpur corridor, it's about 2.5 mile stretch that uh, enables Indian pilgrims to access a holy sex shrine in Pakistan. Not just the governments, the citizens of both countries, uh, they have also sought uh, to build bridges. Now the question is that when cultural dip diplomacy flourished between the two, between the two countries, for your knowledge, cultural diplomacy can highlight and build upon modern day India and Pakistan's collective historical experiences, uh, including the colonial period and long-standing cultural uh, ties to promote a more peaceful interstate relationships. In 2074, only a few years after the Indo Pak War of 1971, the two sides signed uh, a protocol on visits to religious shrines to facilitate citizens of each country to travel to shrines and holy sites in the other country. Also in 1988, they signed the Cultural Cooperation Agreement, which seeks to promote linkages in the field of art, culture, mass media, and also sports. Following, uh, following it uh, up with a, a Memorandum of Understanding and Cultural Cooperation in 2012. Exchanges have also taken place more uh, organically at the individual level without any form of government interventions citizens on either sides of the border uh, they have undertaken initiatives encouraging collaborations as you all know aman ki asha jointly initiated by the pakistani junk group and the indian times of india group they have combining the urdu words for peace which means aman with the Hindi word for hope means Asha, translating uh, which means hope for peace. Uh, it has brought business communities of Pakistan and India closer by holding economic conferences where corporate leaders from across the borders they could uh, meet to discuss exchanging bilateral trade. Also the Aghaze Dosti a voluntary friendship initiatives run through the joint collaboration of Mission Bhartiyam of India and uh, Ham Sab Ek Hai of Pakistan. They has attempted to, to counter narratives of a homogenized enemy that dominate the discourse surrounding India and Pakistan conflict through peace, education, discussions, letter and greeting card exchange of programs and virtual campaigns. The next point is the scapegoating of the film industry. Cinema and television have perhaps been the, the most enduring uh, organic cultural bridge connecting India and Pakistan. The most prominent of these bridges is Indian's uh, Mumbai-based Hindi language film industry, which is Bollywood, which is considered the largest in the world. Bollywood is immensely popular with Pakistani audiences and also hugely uh, for the Pakistani film industry, which depends on showing Indian films, which have the budgets, narratives, and a star power benefiting their dominance in international cinema to stay afloat. Cultural exchange through cinema has largely taken place between India and Pakistan, 
with sustained engagement reaching few heights in the mid 2010 following from the popular uh, pirated and uh, streamed pakistani television shows called uh, its uh, a serials in the uh, in the india new indian television channel zindagi it began to broadcast uh, uh, pakistani serial, uh, serials in 2014 the popularity of these serials in india helped to broaden the image of pakistan in the imagination of indian audiences escaping the uh, the structure of extremist islamophobic and anti-pakistan rhetoric after propagated in, in national discourse at the film industry level this phenomena also helped pave the way for those actors to work in bollywood as leads and co-leads of celebrated industry productions after uh, 1965 indo-pakistani war pakistan imposed a 40-year ban on indian cinema that sent the industry into decline and caused several theaters across pakistan to shut down or be converted into shopping malls or wedding halls most recently uh, pakistan imposed a blanket ban on all cultural exchanges with india including banning uh, indian content from pakistani screens after the indian decision to withdraw article 370 now the question is that will current uh, decisive politics impact cultural diplomacy as you all know that uh, cultural diplomacy is no uh, uh, is, is, an, is a tensions between Pakistan and India. It can provide the foundation for constructive interstate dialogue. During peacetime, it can serve as, as a confidence building measure by providing the opportunity for individuals on either side to learn more about each other. It can also help alleviate uh, the misperceptions and can and can build the trust between the two nations propaganda is like uh, to increase psychological barriers to cooperation and prolonged tensions or crises may may uh, uh, solidify these positions as the government takes increasingly uh, hostile positions toward each other cultural collaborations and interactions at the people to people level it's uh, much needed to mobilize Indians and Pakistanis to collectively fight hate, rhetoric, and decisive politics. But doing so many become increasingly difficult for them. Let's come to the foreign policy relations between India and Pakistan. Uh, as you all know that uh, currently the United States has uh, cordial relations with China. American policy has worked out in tension between those who insist on expanded human rights in China and those who favor opening markets and investment in China and uh, downplaying human rights issues. The United States was closely allied with Pakistan until end of Cold War. The United States provided most of Pakistani military aid from uh, 1954 to 1980. China is now the major military supplier to Pakistan. The United States has maintained cool relations with India because of its refusal to join the West during the Cold War. Its pursuits of a, of a non-alignment foreign policy and for its tight controls on American investment and business enterprises in India. China is the premier military power in Asia and it's also considered uh, Pakistan its oldest and most powerful Asian ally. China continues to occupy areas inside of Indian's borders as a result of the Indo-China War of 1962. 
China has nuclear armed missiles positions against India along the Himalayan border and in Tibet. In addition to being Pakistan's main military weapons provider, Russia has had close relations with India since uh, uh, Indira Gandhi became Prime Minister in 1966. Russia provides most of India, uh, India's military cell. After the demise of the Soviet Empire, Russia is unable to provide economic or military aid to India. India has pursued a policy of non-alignment with Soviet Union and United States since its independence. Indian's planned economy was not open to United States investment until change of policy toward free market in 1991. Now that the, the Russia is weak, India feels isolated and uh, alone in the world community. India has felt that the United States uh, has also been hostile to India uh, and that we now are promoting China as the major power in all of Asia. In the, uh, in the murder for Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan uh, and Pakistan in early 2002, United States relations with Pakistan and its leaders, President General Musharraf, uh, he improved uh, further uh, aggravated India-Pakistan relations. While economic sections were lifted, Pakistani militants staged several attacks and bombings in one occasion, they targeted Indian and Kashmiri legislatures. The United States, uh, they feared possible nuclear uh, retaliation and advised Americans to evacuate both, both South Asian countries. And at the end, I am going to discuss with you that uh, the relations between India and Pakistan, how can they be improved? Uh, in my opinion, uh, there is a need to embarrass an uh, overarching strategic stability regime and to uh, aggressive security doctrines to reduce the possibility of a nuclear conflict. The problems of terrorism and non-state actors need to be addressed jointly through institutional mechanism. There is a uh, water issues between the two countries. It should be resolved through the mechanisms provided by the, the Indus Basin Territory and should not uh, be allowed to generate into a serial source of conflict. There is also a confidence building measures should be uh, pursued to alleviate the trust deficit but should not be used as a, as a substitute for the uh, resolution of disputes. Also, there should be an economic cooperation and trade should be facilitated to develop mutually uh, of interest. India and Pakistan need to understand each other's uh, legitimate interests in Afghanistan and also they should pursue them without coming into conflict with each other. I think that's enough for today. I will come up with the uh, uh, next topic. If you have any question, you can ask me directly or through uh, KCMS account. Thanks and best of luck.